Yo, what's up, guys? Uh, Welcome to the Rock Bottom podcast, where we talk about hitting rock bottom and just um, living here on the bottom. I'm your host, Mr. Super Genki. A little background about me is I've been on this quest to promote positivity for the past five, six odd years, and in this quest, I've been trying to figure out who I am as a person. I thought that I figured that out when I was 19, when I first discovered this term, Super Genki, on study abroad, but I'm unsure now. See, I'm 24, it's about five years later, and I'm unsure if who I really am is this this term, Super Genki, and super means super in Japanese, Genki means energetic, charismatic life, turns into a lifestyle. That's the kind of persona that I've created to describe who I am. But notice that I just used the word persona. And I'm not sure if a persona tends to be who we really are inside. And I've been living my life with this kind of mentality that I am Super Genki life. But... At the end of the day, I think it's just the mask, it's just the face that I put on for society, I put on for other people to try to perceive me as a positive person. But it's not an accurate representation of how I feel inside. And it is May 23rd, 2020, day who knows in quarantine here in Madrid right now. I am, I've been living and working in Madrid for the past eight to nine odd months. And I've been in quarantine now for about two months. And I just feel like I'm at a breaking point. You know, I feel like there is a breaking point that we're hitting right now in quarantine for me and in my life period, just where positivity, this super geeky life, everything that I'm pouring into this idea, I just feel like a failure. I feel like nothing is working. I feel like nothing is getting out to anyone. I feel like that... Honestly speaking, I've made more negativity into the world than I have positivity. And the feeling comes from trying. And I just wanted to start talking about these feelings of trying because I feel like a lot of us, we have this idea about what it means to try to find ourselves, to try to live a life, to try to be adventurous. But by trying to do these things for yourself, you're taking on more responsibility. You're taking on more risk. And this risk can and will lead to stress. Stresses you don't know before. And I think that we associate risks and stresses with with life, right? But we don't like correct the problems because we encounter them so frequently that we're just we're just constantly being bombarded with all these negative emotions and these negative kind of outlets in society and ourselves and the people we interact with that we just say, you know what, this is who I am. And there's nothing I'm going to do about it because I know myself and I know it works for me. And honestly speaking, this is where I feel I am right now. I've just not ever really corrected any of those stresses. I've never really corrected anything that has been wrong with me over the past five years that I've been chasing down a dream, trying to find myself and promote this this positive image, never really taking care of the person never really taking care of the person because I got my persona mixed up with my person. And now I can't even process emotions properly. Like now I'm just literally lying in bed, trying to cry, feeling bad about myself. And my mind just feels absolutely nothing. I can't, I can't call upon anything that would make me reflect even in the slightest. It's just a, it's just a go, 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 go kind of mindset. And it's rough. It's rough. I would understand why some people see positivity as toxic because it definitely can be toxic because humans are meant to be positive. Humans are meant to be optimistic. Humans are meant to be creatures that can create the world that we see around us right now. But this doesn't mean that our life is all sunshine and rainbows. And maybe I've been operating on this sunshine and rainbows kind of mentality for the past couple of years after I graduated college. Maybe I never really graduated from a college student, you know, maybe when you come into college, I think you are hopeful, you are enthusiastic, you are idealistic about the future. 
And then society really does expect you to like drop off that spectrum of idealism, hope, and an opt optimism by the time you graduate so that you can just come and accept the reality for what it is. You know, you can just get a job, you can have a car, a family. Beautiful things though, beautiful things that I really do appreciate now that I've been traveling around the world for so long. It really does change your, your goal-like mindset. And um, I just, I don't know if positivity is my goal anymore. I don't know what kind of persona I'm trying to present to people anymore. I don't know if I'm being genuine. And this has led me to a harsh realization that perhaps I'm not super genki anymore. Perhaps I was never super genki to begin with. Perhaps I was always Andres. And because I didn't see myself as Andres, I never gave Andres, the person I am, the name I was given when I was born, I never gave him the right attention. Because I never gave him the right attention, I've just created more negativity into the world than positivity. And I've hurt more people than I've helped. And I can only remember those negative experiences. And you know, whenever I remember the positive ones, it's only a me experience. It's not like a we experience. It's not like an us experience. And I, I feel like it's rough. I feel like it's rough stuff. And it's, it's led me to places. It's led me to things I'm ashamed of. It's led me to places I didn't want to go. It's led me to missed opportunities. It's led me down so many paths that I just think I'll never be able to get back on ever again. And the mindset is never going to shift. Well, I don't know. I don't want to say never, you know, never say never Justin Bieber. But the mindset just has no interest in shifting to something else. The mindset is very interested in maintaining this aura of positivity to perceive literally everything. And I think that positivity is not an everything fits all solution to life problems. I think that positivity is a lot more situational. I think that we need to learn how to be more realistic. I think that we need to learn how to be negative and ambivalent. They're just as important as positivity. It's just the ratio in which you use your states of mind to perceive the world around you is happens to be really important. But I think that I've been totally on the opposite end of the spectrum and not doing anything to get any sort of semblance of balance in my life. It's just been a go, 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 go kind of mindset where I just I haven't been able to process anything. And it kind of sucks. It kind of sucks not being able to process emotions, not being able to process your ideas or how you feel or the world around you or even how you're affecting other people, how your decisions are impacting the people around you. I think that it kind of sucks. And I have story upon story upon story upon story upon story that I could share with you talking to you about my mishappenings, things that I've just done that have been absolutely terrible to other people and to myself, harmful stuff, because I've tried so much and I've believed so much. You know, they say that the path to hell is usually paved on good intentions. And I think that I do have good intentions and perhaps I have been <laughs> paving the path to somewhere I wouldn't want to go, probably to rock bottom, probably to right now. I've just, um, today's been a tough day. I, I woke up, no semblance of what to do, no streams, no energy, no nothing, just trying to get through the day, trying to sleep my way through the day. I don't know if you, got, if you all have ever done that before, you just, it's like two o'clock in the afternoon and you're just like, let me just sleep. And I, I pray to God that I can sleep until tomorrow, but my body doesn't let me do that. My body says you get one hour of sleep in the midday and you're done because it's already hard enough for me to sleep in the in the evenings. But it's not like I get up and I start doing things after I wake up. It's just I stay there and try to call my emotions, call my feelings for quite a whiz while. And it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate because they don't prepare you for this stuff. I don't think anyone prepares you to deal with this this journey to personal personal discovery. And I can understand why society is pushing a narrative of don't find yourself just conform with the group, just be with the group. It's a lot safer to be a part of the group than to be a lone wolf. This is what I've, I've really come to understand in the past five years of my of my journey 
around the world chasing after my dreams, trying to create YouTube channels, blogs, business posts, um, t-shirts, climbing Fuji. I've done a lot of stuff. And I think that in this podcast, I'm just going to be exploring the past, talking about some of those experiences and how I think it's it was the persona. It wasn't really me. And how I want to really start focusing back on who I am as an individual, because I feel like there is value in this person, Andres, right? There is Andres, you know, there's some type of value. There's some type of good attitude in here. And because I don't nurture and I don't hone and I don't take care of Andres, I'm only worried about Super Yankee. I've clashed a lot with society. I have clashed a lot, a lot, a lot with society. I've gotten fired from jobs before. I've lost opportunities. I've rubbed people in the wrong way. I really have not been taking care of my person. I've only been focusing on this this vague semblance of an idea. And the idea is great, but again, it's a situational kind of persona. It's not a super duper ooper kind of all the time way that I want to be perceived by other people and that I want to perceive the world too because it takes away this this idea of a person and it's rough it's a rough kind of feeling and realization to come to when you just don't have a person to rely on when you just feel like you are this entity you are this persona you're just trying to put on a mask to appease the corporate overlords over and over and over again and you don't feel like you can be with anyone and dude it's it's rough because you know i have this mask and my mask Super Genki is my persona. It's so attractive. People can get people get really riled up and attracted to it. And what I've noticed is that once I take the mask of Super Genki off and I just I'm on dress, that's when complications start to happen. And if I look at my life, some of the worst mistakes that I have made with any interpersonal relationship have come from the time in which I'm no longer Super Genki. I don't feel the energy anymore. I don't want to be this image or this person. And I just become my true self. I give into carnal desires. And I just, I act like a normal human being. And it just, it's really disingenuous to that persona and that perception that I was giving people. So what I've learned to do is to not even invest past the initial conversation. And it's a rough kind of, of life that I've led, man. I have a lot of regrets. I have a lot of regrets about the things I have done and about the things I haven't done. And I have a lot more regrets because I know what I have done now. I feel like you have more, less regrets if you don't know what's out there. But if you know what's out there and you put yourself out there, you have more regrets for missed opportunities, failures in thinking, failures in making and bridging relationships. And it's just... At the end of the day, what are we going to do about it? What are we going to do about it? I have no, no idea. I'm just, I'm here literally in Spain right now on my third continent. Got four more to go. I can make these podcasts where I'm going to talk about the real journey of positivity and it's just hitting rock bottom. Positivity is the journey of hitting rock bottom and getting back up and continuing on. But you will cut your journey short if you're not willing to actually learn from your mistakes. And I know that sounds, oh, you made the mistake, wouldn't you learn from it? I think learn and taught are a little different. You know, remember in school, we were taught geometry, we were taught physics, we were taught chemistry, we were taught writing and rhetoric. We were taught these things, but things that were taught are usually designed to be forgotten. And I feel that mistakes we like teach ourselves the mistakes. The mistakes are taught to us by other people, but they're designed to be forgotten. And for that reason, the mistakes crop up again and again and again and again and again until eventually we associate ourselves with those mistakes and they just become a part of our person. And I have uh, hundreds of mistakes that are associated with my person that lead to the same outcomes each and every time. And it's it's rough, man. It's a part of the rock bottom lifestyle that uh, I've created. You know, I think Super Genki life is my on top of the world kind of mindset, my persona. And then Andres, which again is my name and is the person I am, is associated with this scraping off the bottom kind of like trying to learn 
about how to cope with narcissism and all of these complex concepts that make me have such a an overzealous presentation and mindset of myself, man. Like I just, I put myself way, 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 way too high on the pedestal and I've done this for a very, very long time. There's a definitely a Jesus complex and a superior superiority complex that are riling up in me and it's affected a lot of the a lot of the people that I've met in my life and a lot of the experiences that I've made. And I feel that um, if anything that I've learned in quarantine, if I've learned any, any, anything in quarantine, it's more of a realization that I don't want to say no to people's good intentions anymore. I've done that before because I've been so selfish and I'm like, well, if I don't stream now, if I don't do this work here, I won't do it later. But That's a problem in its own thinking because if I don't do this now, it won't get done later. It means that I don't have the desire to do this later. So if I don't do it now when I have the time, the energy, and not really the desire, I probably won't do it later. But one of the biggest shortcomings of of living is just feeling stressed and feeling like you're on a timetable, especially when it comes to things that you want to do for yourself. I think you have to learn how to manage the chaos of producing content, of making gains in yourself and not giving into this whole mentality of giving up life just to be on the clock when it comes to being a small content creator. creator. I know I've made so many mistakes in my life when it's come to being a small content creator. I've given up so many experiences just because I... I thought that I needed to be consistent and that being consistent was the only formula for actually achieving success. And it's it's really not. If you're just consistent, but you're not getting better and you're not learning and you're not bringing value to people, there's no no end to the tunnel. You're just going to be living in darkness for the rest of your life. And believe me, that's not a fun kind of journey to travel down. I can tell you this from personal experience. I haven't had any fun traveling down this dark journey um, in myself, you know, the super Genki persona has had a lot of fun. He's been out here doing all this other stuff, but it's not even me. That guy, I don't know who he is, but me, um, I'm just constantly shrouded in darkness and just working for that day, working for that breakthrough. And I never get it. And a lot of my good intentions get perceived the wrong way. And I, I make mistakes, man. I make mistakes everyone and it's just it's a rough kind of lifestyle to live so in this podcast where we talk about the rock bottom podcast i'm just going to go talk about life experiences that i've had before and how i think i could have done them better what i've what i've learned from these things and probably going to start it off in japan but we'll, we'll, we'll jump around the world i can talk about several things that i've done before that were successful things that were unsuccessful um things that literally i've just not i've not corrected and they've just led to the same problem cropping up over and over and over again because honestly speaking there's there's nothing there's nothing that would really change me other than me and people don't change unless they change themselves you can give them guidance yes i'm sure but unless you are willing to actually change someone's Unless you're willing to change yourself, I think all the guidance in the world is is toxic, you know, because people always attack this kind of person, man. Why can't I just live my life kind of thing? And I, I am number one. I am numero uno when it comes to this. I have really, really, really been someone who has made quite a bit few mistakes because I've refused to, to change myself. And I think that, you know... I want to get over that. I want to feel better about um, about what's happening right now. So I, I want to talk to you guys about these experiences and try to help you guys get some value from me because I'm positive, yes, but I go through a lot of negative downtimes and I'm, I'm constantly finding myself on the rock bottom. And it, it's, it's rough, man, just living a life on the rock bottom when you want to be on the top. I think if you if you don't want to be on the top, that's fine. But living life on the rock bottom and not knowing how to get up from from the bottom is it's a rough experience. And I 
I hope you all could learn a little bit from me and um, and either not fall down or get back up and try again. So that being said, I think we're going to start with some of the first memories that I have here in my computer. Um, we're going to go back to June of 2015. This was five, wait, what? It was 2020 today? Yeah, this was five years ago. Wow, that's a long time. I was a college student at this time. I'm pretty sure that June 2015, I was in my sophomore year of school. I had just changed schools from American University over in Washington, D.C. to Florida International University. Now, before I get into the 2015 experience, a little background on me why I wanted to go to American University was because I thought it was a great idea to become the president. You know, I, I've suffered quite some trauma when I was a kid. I got into a car accident, lots of details, um, had to relearn how to read, write, speak, eat, talk, all that stuff all over again. It was put back into the public education system. It was really hard to find myself back then. But I had this dream from a very early age, this dream to change the world. And I think that most young kids have some semblance of this dream, you know, changing the world, changing the self. It's a very Americanistic kind of cultural aspect because our, our culture is kind of built on this foundation of change the norm, change the reality, change your life changed the world, kind of goodwill, <laughs> goodwill paving the way to hell kind of mindset. And um, you can look at it all throughout history. We've had a lot of goodwill that has just gone absolutely, absolutely wrong. But I, I came to DC chasing after my dream of becoming a politician, eventually becoming the president of the United States of America. And if you knew me when I was a kid, I was very idealistic, but I was not someone that could be a candidate for the president of the United States of America. I remember a conversation I had with my political science teacher back in senior year of high school, and he told me, he's like, I don't think that you'd be a politician. And I didn't even listen to him back then because I was so trapped in my head thinking that I knew what was the best of the best and i knew you know what we should be doing and you don't know anything because you're a dinosaur or whatever but um after that first year of school and like a lot of college debt like i paid a lot of money to go to a private college and i don't know why right now i'm actually still struggling to figure out why i did that but after that first year of some intense experiences not school related, more life related. I did something really, really stupid. Oh, dude, man, made some really, really bad choices. After that experience, um, I came back to to Miami. I came back to my family. Came back to Florida, and I switched schools to FIU. I can still remember the day that I got the acceptance call to FIU because I didn't have a good, I didn't have a good transcript for my first year of. American University I actually failed my Spanish class. I failed my Spanish class and I could blame it on my mom for making me take Spanish, but um, no, 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 it was totally me. Because back in my freshman year of college, I was really interested in Japanese, but um, you see, my schedule wouldn't allow me to take a Japanese class because I did this thing called the Washington Mentorships Program, which was a really cool program where like, your first semester of college, you were doing an internship and you were also taking classes. It was more expensive than the regular tuition. It was really just the college saying, hey, you weren't good enough to get into our school, but you know what? We think you're nice and we want your money, so we'll give you this special opportunity to, if, you, if you want, you know what I mean? If you want, there's no, there's no like scholarships or anything for this special opportunity, but if you want and you have the money, you can pay for it. And I did this Washington mentorships program where actually, um, I remember going to the job fair and stuff. There were a bunch of internships to apply to, apply to. I ended up choosing two to three places. I went to this one place that was an eco-friendly kind of company. And I went to Bennett Group Financial Services. Both of the interviews were cool. The old guy that worked at the eco company was pretty cool. I remember him. He, was, he seemed like a nice guy. 
And then um, Katie, who was working at Bennett Group Financial Service, was a boss woman. And it was like a group interview of like 60 people over six days. And fun stuff, fun stuff. But not to get too sidetracked, I, I left Washington, D.C. because... I lost my political ambition and I lost that, that good naturedness of trying to learn more about politics, you know, because that was the original reason why I even went to Washington, D.C. in the first place. And this is because I was young and I was so young that I was really trapped by a lot of my emotions, you know, like my emotions were really, really, really hitting me hard. I can tell you why I failed that Spanish class is because Thursday nights when I had to go to Spanish class, usually the Japanese girls were out of class and I was usually with the Japanese girl each and every Thursday night. I failed mainly because I just my attendance wasn't good and my, my, my homework was terrible. But it, it totally crashed my GPA and to get back to what I was saying, I remember the day that I was um that was accepted to FIU. I was in this rent to room apartment with one of my ex-girlfriends, because, you know, we, we just like ran away together from, from a lot of messes. And it was, it was a big experience, but in hindsight, I would never do it again. And I never encourage anyone to run away from someone else's parents, but I got that call and I was really happy. Then I started my university life second year. Right. And it was nice. It was good. But I, I really died down when it came over here. I only had one kind of mindset, one kind of thing that I wanted from college at that time. And that was really just to take a Japanese class. At that period in my life, I was a international relations and political science major. So why was I doing this? You know, my first year of college when I was at, when I was in DC, my major was business administration but then i was like i realized after a semester i'm like why would i want to do business administration i want to be a politician so i tried to change it to international relations but my gpa was too low to switch into the international relations department so what ended up happening was that that was one of the major influ influencers that made me change schools because like if i can't even do international relations then i might as well switch to schools so i went over to fiu and again, like I'm trying to explore my major, but then I realized you don't have to pick a major until your third year of college. So I kind of waited it out a little bit. I kind of waited out a, a, a semester or two before I declared my major. But I had to focus and this is good. This is good. Whenever you're in any transitional phase in your life, it's good to have a focus, something that you love, something that you really want to do, something that you want to chase down. And if I think about it now, I've lost that focus entirely. I don't have even a small semblance of that focus anymore, which is amazing because it's called Japan. And if you ask me when's the last time I studied Japanese, when's the last time I engaged in Japanese culture, I would tell you it's been months. It's been months over here in quarantine when you think that I would find a lot of semblance of of comfort in in the Japanese-ness of, of society. But... Um, I mean, I've lived there for quite a while. I've done many things over there. And dude, man, I'm, I'm hitting rock bottom. I'm telling you, I've hit rock bottom for the first time that I've really been like, wow, I'm here again. How do I get out of this, of this situation? And I have absolutely no, 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 no idea. But I was taking Japanese classes. My um, Japanese teacher, Kubota, she didn't like me. Uh, my classmates thought I was crazy. I guess they were half right. I didn't know I was super genki at the time. I didn't know this was my persona at the time. I just thought I was crazy because that's what people always called me for most of my life. Hey man, you're, pre you know, you're pretty crazy. And I'm like, yeah, crazy. I'll, 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 I'll confine to it. But crazy, you see, has an applicational word. It has a positive and a negative context, and you don't really control the context. Other people do. So when you accept this word for yourself you'll actually start seeing that it's it's kind of like it's kind of like you're accepting this word for yourself but you're accepting other people's perceptions of who you are and that was one of the big reasons why i really 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 did not want to be identified with anything that society said but not at that time at that time i was okay with it because i didn't know any better and I took these Japanese classes. I took Japanese one. I I passed that with an A and I didn't try that much, but you know, it, it is what it is. 
Then I took Japanese too. I took Japanese too, and what happened was that I did not pass with an A, and kanji is not my strong suit. And I remember that class period. I met a bunch of people, all of which I do not stay in contact with right now. I probably should go and reach out to some of those individuals, right? There's a couple of people like Ari, Ari and Lisette and Rob, and, and Rob, I think it was his name. Um, Julian, Julian, there's, there's a couple of individuals back over there that I, I, I think I should reach out to. And I'm pretty sure there was more in that class, but those are the most memorable ones. Um, that was my second year of Japanese class. And the reason that I did Japanese is because I wanted to do Japanese. But I think the change from American University to FIU is really important because I don't know how I got on it, but I heard about study abroad and I thought it was a good idea. Ask me why I thought of this as a good idea. I have no idea, but I thought it was a good idea. And, you know, I was like, you know, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity and I'm going to do this because why not? At the time, though, and this is one of the biggest mishaps of my life, I had no idea that of making a YouTube channel. If I had made a YouTube channel back then, oof, I would be famous by now. Yeah, I, found, I had so many really, really cool experiences, and I took my camera with me anywhere. I have, like, photographs, but I don't have video content. Although that's an excuse. I should probably make the video content myself with the photographs, and it can be, like, something that I do on podcast talking about the life that I've lived. So, you know, it's just, you're always gonna think about those missed out opportunities because it's always hindsight, man. Every opportunity that you miss is always hindsight. It's always like it smacks you in the face, like, wow, how did I not see that kind of thing? But I thought about going to study abroad and I decided I was gonna do it. So I, the, the requirement for study abroad was to finish Japanese one, Japanese two. So I ended up doing that in about two semesters. And then I think it was May, no, June, July, August, September, probably September that I shipped out. But a couple of good things happened before I shipped out. And this is one of those good kind of mentalities I want to talk about, the kind of positivity mindset that I think the positivity mindset kind of promotes. It's that, you see, when you engage in positivity, when you engage in wanting to explore yourself, you open yourself up to more opportunities. Now, whether the opportunities are going to be good or bad, I mean, that's, that's up to the individual. It can be outside of your hand, but it can be good. It can be good because it's, it's persistence-based stuff. You have to really want to be persistent with your... With yourself, you have to really want to believe that you can do stuff. And I'm gonna go back to high school right now. If we scroll back a couple of years prior, when I was in my senior year of high school, I had a class called the student aid. And if you've ever had a student aid before, it can be some work, but my student aid class was in the library. And I don't know how I got the library as a student aid position. I, have, I don't remember. At all, but when you're in a student aid in the library, your job is basically to sit behind the computer. Um, I don't even remember what else I did. I just sat behind the computer sometimes. It was mostly just me sleeping on the couch, reading manga and watching movies on the computers. Um, and that was about it. When I was over there in the library, I, I watched some Chinese movies because I was very interested in Muay Thai at the time. I joined the Muay Thai gym um, two years prior and I was doing Muay Thai a lot from my, I want to say I was doing Muay Thai from what? From my junior year onwards? No, 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 no. It was like my, no, it was my freshman. It was my freshman year of high school. No, 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 no. It was my, oh dude, I don't remember. It was my sophomore year of high school to my junior year of high school. I did Muay Thai. Sophomore to junior year of high school did Muay Thai, and then the senior year, no, dude, no, what am I saying? It's probably junior to senior. Junior to senior year, I did um, Muay Thai, and I was really interested in martial arts, and here I am in my library position watching some some movies, right? Some Chinese movies, but Ip Man is the movie's name, and it talks about Wing Chun, which is a martial art that Mr. Bruce Lee did, right? So here I am doing this, and... I watched this movie and I'm like, wow, this is pretty cool. Now, if I remember correctly, I got interested in Muay Thai because I was reading this manga called History's Strongest Disciple Kenichi. 
and after a couple of like hundred chapters, I was reading and I was like, wow, this Muay Thai thing is pretty cool. I want to do this. So I went online and I searched for Muay Thai gyms in Miami and I found this gym called Jungle Miami, rest in peace, it's not there anymore. And that's how I started training, man. And it was an absolutely awesome experience being able to train with a bunch of older people, getting a lot of experience in martial arts and growing up and talking with people in like a, in a unified kind of place. Something that I'll, 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 I think one of the best points in my life was being consistent to that Muay Thai gym because I can tell you this uh, a couple of years later I went to a karate gym on Sundays and I was not consistent and I, re I regret not being consistent with that karate gym because I definitely had the opportunity to do so um, I've went back a couple of times when I went back to Japan but it's just not the same man just building those relationships is so important man. my sensei was such a cool guy what a cool guy man uh, I remember this one time he hit me in the diaphragm and I, I took it like an American, right? But I heard my whole body inside like crack. It was like, ding, everything cracked. And then he's like, oh, you don't get hurt? You want me to do it again? I was like, no, 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 please. <laughs> I brought a friend that day to karate. He didn't come back because he got hit in the diaphragm too. And he like kneeled over on the floor. And it was not a good experience. But to get back to it, man. Um, so I watched this. I watched this. Ip Man movie and I was like, you know, Wing Chun seems pretty cool. I think that I should probably give it a shot. You know, I should go over here and I should see if I can find a school over in Miami. So I did. And I don't remember how I did it, but I was at the bus stop over at Brickle Station. I gave Sifu Smith a call. Miami Wing Chun is the name of the school. And I gave him a call and I said, hey, my name is Andres and I would like to train Wing Chun at your school. And he says, how old are you? And I said, I'm 16. And he said, oh, I'm sorry, I can't. Um, you know, Wing Chun is a really da dangerous martial art. I train a really dangerous martial art. I train ex-cops and ex-military, and it just wouldn't be appropriate for me to train a kid. Um, he said that to me, and I said, okay, and then I hanged up, and then he hang and then we, the call was done. So I don't know when it was, but a couple of days later, or maybe a week later, I called again, and I said, hey, my name is Andres. I'd like to train Wing Chun. And the guy was like, hey, didn't you call last week? I was like, oh, I forgot, but I would like to train Wing Chun. And he's like, oh, you know, same kind of reasoning. I can't do it. You're too young. Same scenario happened like three or four more times. And eventually the guy was like, look, kid, you know, I understand you want to train Wing Chun. Um, just wait until you're 18 years old and then we can see it. We can talk about it, right? So this was all when I was in high school. And what happened was I, I got up and I started... I kept doing Muay Thai because I had Muay Thai to do, right? I wasn't too heartbroken over not being able to do Wing Chun because I had Muay Thai. And I kept training. Then I went to college. I didn't do Muay Thai in college. Ooh, I messed up really bad, I remember, because the Muay Thai gym was quite far away from my school. And I went there once, and the guy said, you can probably just come here and work for free if you just, like, mop up the area and something. And, ah, oh, dude, I wish I would have done that. That would have been amazing if I had not been spending so much time doing pointless stuff in college and actually like getting into that Muay Thai gym. But I didn't. And um, I didn't do Muay Thai at all my freshman year of college. Big regret right there. But I mean, there's nothing I can do about it. I don't even do Muay Thai right now. I don't practice. I practiced a little bit a couple of months ago. But um, it's just hard. The gym, gym life in quarantine is hard. The motivation to do anything physical is hard, period. And... Dude, I'm, I have to get back into it. I do have to get back into it. And I probably should do it today. I've already taken a shower, but I probably should do it today. I can take another shower. It's not an issue. Um, I did Muay Thai. So to get back to the story, I did Muay Thai back at the time. And then my senior year, and then my, my sophomore year of college came around, right? Because... My, my freshman year didn't do anything. It was a very, very rough year in my development. But my, my sophomore year was more laid back, right? I was less interested in the whole female relationship kind of aspect. Things, my hormones were more under control. Even though they weren't completely there, more under control, man. And, you know, Jungle Miami at the time was too far out of my reach because I was at FIU and it was very far away back then. So I didn't really go... Again, because for some reason, it wasn't as important to me as traveling there. And that's something I really regret. I really regret 
having that mindset, you know, it's too hard to get there. So I'm just not going to go there kind of thing. Because what are you going to do anyway? Like, you're going to stay home. You're going to watch YouTube videos and like masturbate to porn. Like, I don't, I don't get it. Like, what was I doing? It's probably what I was doing. But what was I doing that I didn't want to make that effort to go and train with good people? I, I don't remember. But this has been a, a big kind of thing all throughout my life that I've just been so caught up in my own experiences that I've foregone my opportunities to have experiences with other people. And biggest, biggest, biggest thing that I've learned in quarantine is to never do that again. I'm, I'm never, ever, ever going to, well, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say never, but I'm really, really going to try not to brush people off just because I have my own experiences that I want to make and I have my own things that I want to do. And I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm not going to do that anymore. Really, really, really look back on that. Um, but to get back to my senior year of college, right? No, not my senior year of college. I mean, my sophomore year of college, right? Um, this was the year before I did study abroad. This is when the genesis of Super Genki started, right? And I remembered Sifu Smith and I called him up again. I said, Hey, I'm 18 and I'm going to Japan. I'm going to study abroad in a couple of months. Can I train at your gym? And he said, you know what, kid, you, you, you waited. So yeah, sure you can. And I said, Hey, can I do double classes? Because you know, I don't have a lot of time. And he said, usually we don't do double classes for anyone, but for you, man, you can do double classes. So I trained Tuesday, Thursdays for about two to three hours. And there was like an hour afterwards, we go to like a Chinese restaurant and we'd all just eat together and have, have fun. Um, I remember that I met a lot of people there and I met a lot of people there, a lot of people that I just, I really wish I could reestablish some connections with them, but it's, it, the time frame is just out, it's out of the water. Um, it's unfortunate, it's unfortunate, man. But, um, I met this guy named Sifu Nigel and he was a graphic designer, right? And I'm not going to talk about it too far into this story. I'm going to end it right there. Just remember that Sifu Nigel was a graphic designer and he was a really great guy. Everyone in that gym was a really, really great guy. And um, Sifu Smith actually donated the profits from Wing Chun to a church nearby. Like he was a really, he's a really, really great guy. Really swell role model to have back when I was, when I was younger. But I feel like when I was younger, I didn't really understand the prospect of role models and I didn't understand the prospect of respecting people and giving people their due attention, you know, like thinking about what people are actually doing when they invest into you. Because, you know, everyone's trying to invest something into you. They're trying to buy up those stocks in your head. But some people are are trying to be, um, what's the word? Not selfish. It's, what's the other word? Uh, it's not aristocratic. What's what's the other word? It's um, ah, oh, dude, I, I this, what, what's the word? See, I'm having trouble remembering this word. Altruistic. There you go. Bam. I'm having trouble re remembering this word, and it just speaks to how disremoved the word is from my vocabulary and from my mindset. Some people are just a little altruistic, and they're just trying to do the right things. And I really do believe that Sifu Smith was one of those people, and I really admire him. I really admire him for that. He had a really good impact on me as a kid. But I trained there for two months and I, I remember this guy named Bull. And there was a month that he took off and I, I said to Bull that we should train together. And then I never honored that situation. I never even contacted him. And I, I felt bad about it afterwards. But again, I was so like interested in myself that I didn't feel bad enough to make any changes. And I think that when we're too interested in ourselves, we tend not to make changes. We tend not to learn. We tend to be just people that continue to encounter the same obstacles over and over and over and over again. And that sucks. It really, it really does suck. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I didn't, I didn't like that at all about myself. And I've continued that trend up until today, up until today. And I don't know if I'll continue it to tomorrow. Hopefully, I can finally learn something and not just have to be taught this lesson anymore. Hopefully I can learn something and really value myself a little more. It probably means I have to make some phone calls. I probably have to make some phone calls, buddies. Probably have to make some phone calls after this. Probably have to make some phone calls. Have to make some phone calls. Make some phone calls. And what do I mean by probably have to make some phone calls? I mean like honoring the people that have really invested time and energy into me. 
you know, I just think about my parents, I think about some of my, my, my bosses in my life, I think about some of the people that have mentored me. I really do have to honor these people because I, I didn't understand why locals didn't like tourists until today. Um, I was, a, I'm a tourist. I'm, a, I'm an eternal tourist. <laughs> I'm an eternal tourist no matter where I am. And in fact, I have to honestly tell people that I live here most of my life. I'm like, no, wait, no, I live here. I live here. I've said that many times before because people think I'm a tourist. And I can understand why people don't like tourists because they're too interested and invested in themselves and they don't understand how their actions could impact the people around them. And I feel that, oh, I wish it was different. I wish, I wish, I wish it was different, but it's not. It's just when you're so interested in yourself, you become a little narcissistic. And you may not be a narcissist, but you become just a little narcissistic. And I've, I've honestly, I've been so interested in myself for so long that I am like a fake narcissist. Like I'm not like a genuine narcissist, but I'm kind of like a fake narcissist because I have a lot of those tendencies that promotes that, that aura of being a narcissist. I don't know what being a narcissist is, but I've been told so many times in my life you act like one. And I'm like, dude, man, I know, but like, what am I gonna do? Because you know, like, I don't wanna learn. I'm just getting taught these lessons, but they're not as important enough to me to actually like learn this experience. Anyway, to get back on track. So sophomore year of college, doing Wing Chun, it's really great. Um, Sifu Smith's a great guy. All these people are great, great, great people. These communities are awesome. But again, I'm not learning anything. I'm still, I'm still like, I, I'm still me. And um, then I'm off, and I'm off, and I'm off. And I remember the, the day, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close today's podcast entry with being off to Japan. Because I feel like this is the start of the term Super Genki. This is the, the culmination, the the first catalyst experience that led me to this idea of Super Genki and later to Super Genki life. This, this persona that you see right now on camera with this picture right here and Fushimi and Ari Jinja and some Japanese designer clothes, man. Those were, that was a good outfit, man. I totally destroyed all that clothing. And I lost, oh, I love wearing those black hats, but I've, <laughs> I've bought three or four of them and I've lost them all because I'm totally unaware of my surroundings. But um, it's just the, it's the genesis, the start. And I, I still remember, I can still remember the, the day that I was, I was there because it was a lot of anticipation, right? A lot, a lot, a lot of anticipation over on that journey over to, to Japan. And I remember it very fondly. It was like, no, I don't remember fondly. It was like, I was kind of stressed out because this was back when we lived in the roads, me and my family, and we didn't have a bed for me to stay on, so I was always sleeping on the couch, but our couch wasn't that sleepable, and I was just sleeping on the couch, and legitly speaking, I was awake for like 17 hours before I had the Uber call, because this was an Uber was in its infancy, when it was a great time to invest, and um, I was just sleeping there, feeling all like ready and excited, and jittery for this for this next experience and um i didn't say goodbye to anyone i just i just left i just like 6 30 in the morning i had an early plane flight to catch on jl i just i packed my bags the day before not the day before maybe a couple days before um my family had come my little sister my dad my biological dad they all come we all say hello um, it was a really hopeful time in life. It was a really hopeful, good time to be alive. I think that a lot of the representations of, of idealism and what it means to be a young person are captured when you, you take those chances and you take those risks when you're young. And I feel that a lot of young people miss out on that because they don't take those big leaps of faith. And if you don't learn how to take leaps of faith when you're young, you're not, it's going to be very hard to learn how to take leaps of faith when you're older. And I mean, it, again, at the end of the day, it is more important about what you want and what you desire, what you value. That's probably the most important kind of thing. But I do happen to agree that 
getting some type of mission, getting some type of goal when you're young is so important to creating memories and creating experiences. For me, my singular goal, and this was for much of my time throughout my development because I loved, I loved anime when I was younger. I wasn't like an anime fanatic, but I loved Naruto. And I, um, I actually wasn't that into anime as I, as I thought it was. I was more into manga. Most of the big revelations that I ever had when I was younger came actually from manga, not from, not from anime. And something that I thought was cool was that it gave me a mission. It gave me a mission. And if I look at where I am now, my mission is really, really, really hazy. It's not learning-based mission. It's just a doing-based mission. And I'm not growing just by the doing. You know, we talked about this in the beginning of the podcast today that... Um, positivity can become really toxic when you just you stop learning and you stop growing and you just you start doing too much. And I, I framed it in different words, but you just start doing stuff and then you get like burnt out and then you hit rock bottom and you don't understand what's happening to yourself. But you try to get back up because your positive mindset won't leave you alone and you just want to keep doing things. You just kind of keep being productive. You want to keep being happy, but it's like a mask. You know, it's a mask. It's a persona that you put on for other people because you need, we crave, humans crave social validation. We do, we crave it so, 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 so much. But again, if I had to say anything that I would take if you're watching this video and you're under the age of, I don't know, like 70, right? <laughs> if you're under the age of 70, um, important to always remember to have a mission in your statement, you know? I think it's funny that you know when we're applying for a job we have like a personal statement right we have a mission statement but when we live our lives we don't usually have a personal statement we don't have a mission statement i think deciding what your personal statement for life is going to be is really important and this is probably the first really big idea deciding deciding your personal statement your personal personal statement for living statement for living for living because I think it's so interesting that I think it's so 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 interesting that what's it called I think it's so interesting that when we apply for jobs not just our resume I mean you could say your resume is your personal statement but we also have to write like a personal statement right or like when we're applying for college or anything I've written tons of personal statements and I always use my car accident story Whenever I um, whenever I write my personal statements, it's it's like it's the bread and butter, man. It'll, it's it's my brighter butter that'll get me into anywhere. It didn't get me into Brown. It didn't get me into any Ivy Leagues. But um, I mean, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, I had a I had a weird high school experience as well too. I wasn't that great of a student. Yeah, I could talk to you, man. I've epically failed so many times in my life, like epic, epic, epic failures all 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 throughout my life buddy but you know what still here still trying still gonna get up here but again let's just get back on this because i'm definitely at rock bottom definitely hit rock bottom and i, I don't want to climb out of rock bottom anytime soon because i don't feel like i'm a better version of andres you know i'm not super genki right now i don't want to be super genki i want to be andres i want to be andres I want to be honest. I want to work on me. I don't want to work on this persona anymore. I think the persona is fine, but I want to work on the me part of this kind of person right now because I think the me needs to be taken care of. Anyway, what I was talking about was that I think that the best lesson you can take away from today's podcast is that the best lesson you can take away in today's podcast is really just to start have a mission man have something you want have something you desire make it big man make something that's going to keep you focused you want to be focused when you're living your life you want to be a little focused when you're living your years not life i mean life is really long and it's really vague and it's really no one really tells you about it man i went to college and they didn't tell me anything about the life experiences that i was going to make after college but i think a good kind of state of mind to have is just to really, really, really be a little certain about your mission. You know, what you want to do, what you want to learn, not what you want to do, what you want to learn, how you want to improve, you know, because when you do something, you make your mission the doing, believe me, there's not much that comes after the doing, but there's always more that comes to the learning. And I've, 
I made my mission to do many things in my life. And let me tell you, I've done them. And it's not all sunshine and roses. It's not what I thought before I did them. The anticipation did not match the completion at all. And every time I finish doing something, I'm just on to doing the next thing. And it's leading me down this eternal chase, chasing down like a memory, chasing down an idea, chasing down an ideology, chasing down a persona. That's not helping me get any better as a person. Literally, I think that's it. I think the persona has gotten better, but the person has not gotten any better in these past five years. And it's, it's dude, that's, that's an amazing realization of regret right there and shortcomings. But you know what? I, I'm okay, man. I'm full of shit. I made a video about this that I'm going to post next week. And I really just... I don't want to lie about this stuff anymore. I want to be honest. I want to be honest about this journey. I want to be honest about this persona. I want to be honest about myself, what I'm doing here. From now on, you're going to see a, def a different Super Genki in these videos. You're going to see a different... No, you're, going to see, no, you're not going to see Super Genki that often anymore. You're going to see Andres. Because if I'm going to be making any of these videos, Andres needs to be the main focus of these videos. I don't think Super Genki... Super Genki's had enough time to be the focus of these videos. I think Andres needs to be... The focus of these videos right now so yeah that's just a little update on what's to come where i'm at what's gonna happen right now with the future of these podcasts i'll try to get some other people on the podcast so that we can spice up the content a little bit you don't have to listen to me talking 24 7 well an hour straight and you know i'm a chatterbox you give me time to talk i'll talk i'll talk i'll talk i'll talk i'll talk and that's what i'm about you know, they say that women talk like 20,000 words a day and men talk like 8,000 words a day. Nah, not this, brother. I talk like 40,000 words a day. You give me an opportunity, I will talk, 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 talk. It's one of those kinds of side effects of being a narcissist. Because if you give a narcissist a time, enough time to talk about themselves, believe me, they will talk about themselves. Because their favorite thing in anyone's, the favorite thing in any language to anyone is their name. And the most interesting subject to most people is their own life. But when they don't have life experiences to talk about, they just devalue the most interesting subject to themselves. And I think that's, um, it's okay. And it's definitely situational. I wish that I devalued my situation a little more. I've made plenty of mistakes where I've talked about myself and gotten myself into trouble. We'll talk about some of those mistakes over here in the podcast, definitely, because I think that there's a lot of learning here. And you might say, oh, it's common sense, but common sense is not common practice. And I feel that we need to learn together from each other or nothing's ever going to change. You know, that's what I'm trying to think about right now. We're going to try to change this person. I'm going to try to change my reality. And who knows about the future right now? Still in coronavirus, the world's still in lockdown. I don't know about the future, man. I'm praying that the world's going to open up by August so that I can buy this plane flight and go work and go to Australia and Japan and I can do these things, get this stuff done. But I'm also ready to go back home. I'm also ready to go back home. I'm not lying about that. I'm ready. I'm ready to go back home, pay my dues, see my family and spend time over there. And I don't want to get a job right now. I don't want to get a stable job. I don't want to slow down my pace because I'm still in my mid-20s and I still have a lot more stuff, ground I have to cover before I'm ready to settle down. But I need to work on being a better person. I need to work on not encountering these mistakes anymore because I've hurt a lot of people. I've hurt a lot of people in my life and it's unfortunate. Like People that I've loved, I've hurt especially the most and it's, it's rough. It's a rough realization to come to. But I do think that um, it's okay. If we come here and we're here together and we're honest with each other, we can get out of this rut, we can get out of this rock bottom experience, and we can make the future more more bright. We can really turn it up a notch, you know? And I think that's an amazing experience to have, is to be able to be hopeful about the future and to believe in ourselves again. To have that whole machismo of a college kid and just not be blindfully ignorant of the world around us and not be ideal and, and not be naive, but be just hopeful and present because so much more of our life is actually in our control than we think it is. But if we don't think about it, believe me, we'll never realize what's actually in our control and what's actually not. 
because every day matters to a degree, but you you decide how much it matters. You decide how you're going to see it. You decide how you're going to perceive it, whether you're going to be in rock bottom, climbing out of a pit, or just exploring the bottom, or just on the climb, or on top of the world. It's all up to your decision, because it's all a state of mind. I can tell you how you feel is your state of mind, and you get to choose what kind of state of mind you're going to be in. Anyway, um, that's the podcast for today. I hope you all enjoyed it. I'll see you all in the next one. All right, everyone, take care. Um, we'll be back next week. I'll see you all later. I'll see you all later. Bye bye.